Welcome in guys. Uh, this is the third part of the Excel Think series about the George, my visit to George Washington University uh, Weight Management Lab. Now, this is the concluding piece, but this is probably the most important piece because this is where it starts to come into how it relates to you all, which is really what I want to be able to get across. This is the plan itself. So we've gone through in the first part was the testing uh, that we had before. The second part talks a little bit more about my specific results and the, the consultation in terms of what we found from that part. And then this part is, let's get the plan going forward. How are we gonna be able to reach the goals that we're talking about? The goals that I set originally was 100 pounds, uh, but the thing, it, it wasn't the right steps and I didn't have really a plan to be able to get there. This shows how we're able to put all these things together. Resistance training, uh, nutrition, which is a big part, and then the things that you put into your body in terms of supplementation, those types of things. Also, what we're gonna talk about in this video is the negative association to food that people get in their head, and where that comes from is marketing, and it comes from a number of different things. So we're gonna talk a little about that afterwards, but I want you to be able to see this video. If you see one of these three videos, this is the one that you need to watch because this is what relates directly to you. So I'll see you on the other side. The other thing you have to think about when you think about those things it goes back to the issue of sustainability. Mm -hmm. You know, is it reasonable to think that you're going to be able to do that long term. And you may it may work for weight loss. And most people, like you said, you can swing 20 pounds relatively easily. Most people don't have any problem losing weight. Yep. They just don't know what to do to keep it off. That's right? the key. And that's the key. So the thing that you're doing to keep it off should be the thing that is causing you to lose it. There shouldn't be any difference between those two approaches. Gotcha. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're gonna teach you how to do is something that's sustainable that as a result of that behavior is going to result in fat loss but once you get to where your body's going to plateau that's it you're not doing anything different you're just in cruise mode at that point gotcha. Gotcha. that just requires some patience yeah. because that approach means your weight loss is going to be slower because we're concentrating on fat loss with simultaneous muscle gain which results into very slow changes in weight. And that's fine, you know, I, I think, you know, I can wrap my head around that because mm -hmm. I mean, it, it makes sense. And, you know, again, it, I am a lump of clay here. I just want to make sure that's very clear. You know, the idea is that there's so many things that we get influenced by media, that type of stuff, or we hear supposed experts that don't have any science behind what they're doing say, okay, this is the way that you go. I mean, I've fallen victim to that mm -hmm. quite often. So. Having a prescriptive process showing how it's done, listen, I'm 100% I'm open to it. Okay. These, um, these drinks, like the, the Huel or the Soylent, I don't have any problem if you want to use them as a meal replacement, if you want, if you can work them in mm -hmm. to your plan, mm -hmm. okay? So you're going to get calorie, a calorie goal and macronutrient goals. And if you're on the go, if you're busy, there's no problem using these. Mm -hmm. Now the Soylent thing, if you were to use it one time a day, I'm not worried about it. Okay. I don't want you relying on it as your primary nutrition throughout the course of the day. Yeah. Okay, so that's the difference. Yes, yeah, you got gotcha. is, is vegan, so it's pea protein. Um, it's a little bit more uh, balanced macronutrient wise. Um, it's up to you. I mean, so, I, mean like I, I was looking at the difference because I, I saw people that did um, you know, that did the soil and, and just the results that happened with it. I mean, and I had my quick results of it. So like when you start talking about the fuel, how do you feel about the sugar and the, those types of things that's in there as well? So Huel doesn't really have that much sugar in it. It has a lot of fiber. It's higher protein. It's good carb. It's a little bit lower fat. Again, it's a little bit more balanced. There's, I'm looking at the, hold on, the Soylent one. Where'd the PDF go? So we can hop off the soil and I'm with you on that. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. I think it's more of, you know, I have to travel a lot. And so sometimes having a meal replacement. That doesn't even have that much sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We encourage that. Okay. So to, to address your sugar question, just point blank, we're not worried about it. Because you're eating in a deficit and your carbohydrate levels are, are controlled. It's not like it's a free for all and you're eating a, you know, a lot of calories and then we have to be worried about sugar. 
We're not gonna be worried about it because we're putting you in a deficit. Okay. So gotcha. don't worry about sugar. Okay. I'm gonna encourage fiber containing grains, fiber containing carbs, fruits, veggies, any kind of starch or grain that has fiber in it. Just because you get better satiety, you feel better, it's better for your gut. But if you want to have sugar, eat sugar. Yeah. It just gets worked into your total carbohydrate plan. Right. Yeah. And this is where our whole mindset of there is no good food, there's no bad food. Food is food. Mm -hmm. It gets worked into your plan. You eat what you like, you eat what makes you feel good, it, you eat what gives you energy, but you're gonna try your best to hit your numbers. Gotcha. Okay. And fit it into your individualized plan. Okay. Oh. Which, which sounds a lot better because so much you, you, know, you, you think about the restriction, mm -hmm. especially when you start talking about There is no restriction. Because yeah, you're not dieting. Much. We're not dieting. Very clear. Diet. You're eating an appropriate amount of calories based on your physiology. But that's what you're trying to do. And we're not saying that, you know, obviously we eat candy, we have M&Ms and peanut butter cups and stuff like that. You can, if you were to eat a lot of that stuff, you wouldn't be able to hit your protein goal. You wouldn't be able to stay yeah. under your fat goal. Yeah. So we're not saying you can eat whatever you want. I mean, we are saying we are. you can eat whatever you want. You just can't but, eat as but much. Yeah, it's, yeah, right. it's a balance. It's, yeah, it's right. a balance. Which, which makes sense. I mean, the thing about it is, is like you said, if you want to have one, you still got just got to be able to work it within your plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, let's just say you have a moment of weakness and you eat like 18 Oreos, you know, like a whole sleeve of them, and it's like, well, uh, what do I do now? What you have to enter that. You have yeah. to track that. Right. Well, that's Girl Scout you, cookies. So right. what's going to say yeah. right now? The Thin Mints. Could house that whole sleeve, <laughs> man. And they make them I get too. I know. Just big enough. They're Ooh. so good. Me yeah. and my son ate a whole sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> Two you can hours. Just house those things, and you just look at it, and you're like, what just happened? Don't know. You gotta track it, right? <laughs> and so you. when you're tracking it and you're holding yourself accountable, you were talking about that. Mm -hmm. It happened. You know, if you're not tracking it or if you choose not to track it, in our heads we're like, well, that never happened. Yeah. I didn't track it. Yeah, it, it did. Has it has it, to be. Yeah, it did. Be. Yeah, I mean, it, it happened. You're right. I mean, and that's. We just gotta, we, we get to a place mentally where we don't wanna feel bad about ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we ignore it. Or we just don't track it because it's like, well, what's not there is not gonna hurt yeah. me. It does hurt you. Yeah. You're the only one it's hurting. Yeah, you're right. By not tracking it. Yeah. So everything's there as just, it's, we're being open about it. I had a person, and to your point, you know, more on a serious tip, it's, I had a person that reached out to me, I won't say her name, but she talked about to this thing is that to make it to where it didn't happen, she would eat it and then she would purge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, which is a whole other yeah, problem. that's and, a whole other problem. You know, it's, uh, you know, obviously you don't have time to get through that, but the whole point is to your point. Yeah. You, you know in your brain what you're doing. Yeah. Right. You make herself feel better about it, she would purge. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's sad, you know, in terms of what's there, but by the same token, there's more things that she needs to deal with to be able to get past that. Mm -hmm. and so, like you said, it's between the ears makes such a difference. Again, we have a hard time sitting with those feelings of guilt. Mm -hmm. But if you understand that nothing's restricted, the guilt's gone. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So then there's nothing to feel bad about. Yeah. That you move sense. on. It's done. Let's move on. You yeah. reset. You always have the opportunity to reset. Yeah. People attach good or bad to a food, which oh, is a mistake. Yeah. And they say cupcakes are bad. So if I eat a cupcake, now I'm bad. I have something to feel bad about. But if that fits within your carbohydrate and fat goals and you can make that fit, it isn't bad. Yeah. Even if it goes over, it's still not bad. Yeah. Right? Well, you, the thing that you know you just said, both of you just said, is that there's the bad and the good, and people label foods. Mm -hmm. Oh, good foods, so bad labeling. Foods. Or clean. And the association, mm -hmm. people put that into their head. Subconsciously, mm -hmm. it happens. Yeah, because you, you attach an emotion to it. Gotcha. No, right. I think you're right. So you don't label food because it removes the emotional connection. Food is what it is. Right. It no, provides a certain amount of nutrition. That's it. Yeah. Same page. Cool. So speaking of food, what do you eat? Walk us through your day. Are you ready for this? We should probably get to his food. Yeah, I'm ready. So from the time you get up to the time you go to bed. So <clears throat> I've been doing intermittent fasting. That's what I was talking about before in terms of trying to say, okay, you know, what, what's my window going to be? Mm -hmm. So I had eight hour window. Um, you know, usually I wouldn't eat until, you know, one o'clock, mm -hmm. have that window till nine. And that was, that was the restriction. I've been doing it kind of on and off for call the past two months. 
Um, How many days, a, were you doing it every day or was it two days a week? It was usually the five days during the week because it was easier because when I'm traveling, if I didn't you know, have to worry about that you know, first meal, it made it a lot easier. Plus, if I was on the road, I didn't eat garbage. You know what I mean? In terms of what it was. One of, one of my toughest meals of the day is that breakfast meal. And so I'm at a hotel, you don't have a lot of options, you know, so it's like, all right, you know, I'm, done, I'm doing this. And then, you know, so I said, all right, instead of doing that, I'm gonna try something different, you know, with intermittent fasting. So at least I can get to lunch and get me something that was, you know, relatively, you know, good. Mm -hmm. Now, if we talk about a typical day. So let's say that it's, you know, three eggs in the morning, um, you know, usually like a, a bacon or something like that, you know, some type of a, a meat. And, uh, you know, I've tried to stay away from doing some type of a bread or a carb or something like that mm -hmm. um, from that standpoint. Usually in the eggs, I'll try to put, you know, spinach and some cheese in there, you know, to be able to make it good. Um, fast forward, get to lunch, you know, try to have like a, you know, a sandwich or something like that. And dinner, dinner is where I falter, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, even though you may have the healthy components in there, it's all the other stuff. I mean, like the taste. So it may be a sauce or something like that that really kind of puts it over the top. So, you know, I think at my highest that I've ever been in my life was probably about called three months ago when I got up to 354. And that was the biggest I've ever, ever been in my life. Um, and so it was like, all right, I've, you know, moved down and I've tried to, you know, but that's kind of a typical day. It's not a five or six meal a day. It's more of a three meal a day. And you know that's kind of what it is. So that's that's where I'm having the struggle. So you don't eat many snacks. It can be. Um, usually it's something. It's not much. I mean I don't snack that much. You know, and if I do snack, I mean usually like I like things like you know sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, those types of things. Mm -hmm. Those are those are okay. I think where my weakness starts to come in is like you start talking Reese's. Ugh. If, if, if I, I can't even be around them, it's, 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 I love them so Because you're not eating any carbohydrate. Yeah, you are so deprived. Yeah. yeah. That's why you're craving that's it. That's why you're craving yeah. it. Yeah, your brain, your body wants carbs. Yeah. You're not giving it to it. So when you see peanut butter cups sitting there, it's like. You're drooling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're eating In too fact, much fat. you should eat one yeah. right now. Eat one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, well, you think I'm kidding. Open it up. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not, the funny thing about it is I've been fasting, I'm not hungry because I'm just used to not. Eating so, it time? you need fuel. Yeah, eat I'm it. Right. I'm with you. I'm with you. Why is he not eating it? <laughs> he didn't afraid to eat all of them. That's right. Hand it over here, man. It's done. But anyway. How big, how about your portion size, like at dinner? Oh, it's it's, it's bigger. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's bigger than what, than what it should be. That, I mean, again, the lunch and the dinner, even if I'm making something healthy, it's probably more than what it should be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean when, when I had my best success, in terms of, I'll, I'll talk about my adult life. When I had my best success was when I was doing like the Body for Life strategy. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, okay, you look at your fist and you say, okay, that's how much your protein is gonna be. You know, you look at your carb, you know, you were uh, you know, doing brown rice, same type of thing. And that's where I was portioning out my plates. And I had great success with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but that was you know, damn near 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, you know, each time I said, okay, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna try that strategy but it's like the five to six meals. My life is more complicated in terms of traveling. It's not an excuse. It is an excuse, I get it. But it's more of doing that five to six meals a day. It was just, it was just yeah. tough. Yeah, and I couldn't right. carry stuff with mm -hmm. me, you know, so that made it difficult. So it's just, you know, trying to find a way to be able to work that into the schedule I have to do is, you know, part of the challenges as well. Okay. Okay. So in terms of intermittent fasting, it's a strategy. To, to try to alleviate some stress related to meal planning and put you in a deficit. That's why it works, mm -hmm. right? If you, and again, coming back to what Todd said at the very beginning, if you don't envision continuing that forever, don't continue with it now, okay? okay? Because it, it's a label, it's a, a labeled strategy, right? Um, if you like it, if you like some of that structure, then continue it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're going to, again, we're going to be giving you a nutrition plan. How you choose to implement that over the course of the day is really up to you. However, I am a big fan of fueling you through the day. Mm -hmm. 
especially in your case, you're consuming large portions and you're craving sweets later in the day, yeah. which means you're under fueled in the beginning of the day. Yeah, this is like what it comes down to. I mean, it's a great point. So we, re we really need to restructure that if we're going to optimize how you feel. There's a way to do it quickly, conveniently, on the road. There's a way to do it. You just got to know what to look for. Gotcha. And that's where I come in. I will guide you on some of that. Cool. All right, I've got lots of documents. I'll email you a ton of stuff. Yeah. No, that's, that's okay. perfect. I mean, again, I'm a lump of clay here. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll work the program to the T. Our so program needs to fit your lifestyle. No, I get it. Right? I get it. So you, you're, you're going to try some things. You're going to rework some of your approaches, your lifestyle. Let us know what's working, what's not. You know, you might say, um, because I'm going to give you a plan with three meals and two snacks. Okay. Okay. You might come back to me and say, you know what? I just... Stuff I can't do two snacks. I can handle one, but that second snack, I'm missing it. I just can't work it in. My schedule's too crazy. So we restructure things. Yeah, the it's snacks not that is big of a the, deal. Snacks is usually the easier part because, like I said, if it's they're you know, quick, they're on the things. go. They fill your gaps. Mm -hmm. So that's the way that that we like to look at it. Your meals provide the bulk of your nutrition and your fuel. Mm -hmm. Snacks fill the gaps. They fill your nutrient gaps of what you cannot eat at meals because you can't hit all of your nutrients within three meals. Yeah. You just can't. Snacks also fill your fueling gaps. So they kind of, they give your brain, your body, your organs, your muscles fuel to keep you going, which in turn manages your appetite. Now, in terms of protein, and we start talking about, you know, building muscle, yeah. those types of things, you know, everything that we've heard out there is that, you know, you need one gram of protein per you know, per pound. Yeah, we don't use that. Okay, that's why I make sure that I'm, yeah. Throw all, the, throw all the crap out of my brain is my, is my point, is that I need to understand that because that's what I make sure I get it. We feed protein based on your fat-free mass. Okay. That's the mass that requires nutrition, nourishment. Again, we don't need to feed your fat. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at pounds of weight, we're including fat in there. Okay. We don't want to do that. Okay. You're going to be overfed on protein by a lot if you do that. Okay, good. Nice calorie goal, by the way. Did you do that for my benefit? That's for you, I did that. <laughs> so sweet. So we have a calculator that helps us look at the numbers and the macros and the calories, right? Because I want to make sure that everything's going to be balanced. I never want protein to be the greatest contributor to your calories, okay? okay? As a percentage. And sometimes people with a lot of muscle, if they have a lot of muscle, because we're feeding protein based on the muscle mass, it can throw the protein requirements really high. Gotcha. I need carbohydrate to be the primary nutrient we're feeding you because that is your fuel source. So different than what? I know. Yeah. And that's why I'm trying to like say it slowly so you're No, I'm with me. you. I, I just, yeah, it, it's registered, but it's just having to, you know, fix your Carb body to get is there. your fuel. Again, you're eating in a deficit. Carb is your fuel. We're giving you protein to grow and restore muscle and recover the muscle and support all your other tissues in your body. We keep the dietary fat low mm -hmm. so that we can feed you adequate Good. carbon protein, but then also get your body to be tapping into in it into its fat. Okay. You have 141 pounds of fat. Yeah. You've got enough fuel on you. Yeah. Kind of miss it. Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> In your diet, what you told me, you've got a lot of fat. Mm -hmm. Whole eggs, fat. Cheese, fat. Sunflower seeds, 100% fat. Bacon. Bacon, fat. We need to pull those things down okay. and replace them with fiber containing carbs. And we, how am I gonna feed him that much protein? <laughs> 280 grams. 70 grams per meal. Man, you are going to be eating. So here's the one thing. When we pull fat down, okay, it, it frees up nutrients from protein and carb, right? Frees up calories. Calories, that's what I should have said. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of volume. So you're going to be plating your breakfast. I'm going to give you an idea here. <clears throat> two, and a, <laughs> two cups of egg whites, two whole eggs, four slices of toast, and a cup of berries. Wow, four slices of toast. I'm shocked on that. That's a breakfast. Okay. A dinner or a lunch could be nine ounces of cooked chicken, fish, not salmon, white fish. You say not salmon, I'm curious. I'll come back to that. Okay, yeah, please do. 
shellfish, anything like that. Lean protein. And almost like a cup and three quarters of rice. Okay. And then whatever veggies you want. White, when you say white or brown Don't rice? Don't care. Okay. Good. Nutritionally, it's almost the same. Okay. So many things you guys are dispelling from my brain. It's good because two cups of mashed brand. potatoes. Yeah. Two almost almost two cups of pasta. Yes, wow. you can eat pasta. Wow. Um, it's it's gonna be a lot of volume. So just picture that you were talking about body for life and the size of your fist. You need like eight fists. <laughs> yeah, what it sounds like. Okay, like, to yeah. like hit everything. <laughs> wow. So you gotta push all of that out of your head. The size of your fist is a, well, your fist is probably about four ounces. Okay, so we're, we're, we're feeding you base like Todd said on your physiology, your composition. So your portions are going to be different to what somebody else might need. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm going to give you all that structure. I'm going to outline that plan for you so you can have an idea as to what, what yeah. you're looking at in terms of meal planning. Yeah. All right. Now, help me out because one of the big things, uh, and I will feign ignorance on this one, is the whole macronutrient thing. It's intimidating for somebody that doesn't know, and I'll speak for myself. Can you kind of explain a little bit about what's the components of it, how do you track it, those types of things for, for, for somebody who doesn't know? Mm -hmm. That's a loaded question. So macros are the three energy producing or energy yielding nutrients for the body. Protein, carbohydrate, and fat, mm -hmm. okay? They're found in all food, all right? But what we're trying to get you to do just by tracking and trying to understand your macros is understanding what your food is providing you. You know, do you know what you get in rice? Do you know what macros you get in rice? You know, what portion of rice gives you what macros? You might not understand what the grams mean, yeah. but that's where the meal plan is providing some structure because this is what your body needs. I that well, no, no, you did, well, but, but I mean, I think it, it, it makes sense because part, part of what I want people to understand with this as well is that they have to understand that it's per your body. It's it not a universal thing. Right, and the way we calculate it is we give 20% of your cal we determine your calorie goal based on your metabolism test. Okay. And then from that calorie goal, 20% of those calories come from fat percentage of calories that come from protein is based on your fat-free mass. So we give 1.4 grams of protein per pound of fat-free mass. Mm -hmm. And then whatever's left over comes from carbohydrate. Okay. So the protein percentage is, the protein and carb percentage is really what fluctuates based on the muscle mass, based on the fat-free mass. So if you have more fat-free mass, you'll get more protein and less carb, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Right. Really, the, the benefit to understanding macros is knowing what is in your food. Right. It's teaching you about what is in your food. We just go and we eat based on what we like. We're not really thinking about function and what that food is providing us. That's what we're trying to teach you and help you understand when it comes down to macros. Yeah. Because fat, we don't need a lot of dietary fat. I know what's out there. Mm -hmm. I know that eating fat makes you a fat burner. You need fat for brain health. I need fat to reduce inflammation. Avocados are heart healthy. They're right. good fats. I need to lower my Avocados, cholesterol. Avocados, almonds, coconut oil, salmon. Yeah. All that so stuff. there's your salmon. Yeah. Fat is fat. Yeah. Eating more fat, it's very easy to bump up your calories and put you in a surplus by eating more fat. Yeah. That's going to be one that people aren't going to be able to deal with because they hear salmon. Well, it's a math problem, yeah. right? I mean, if you're eating, if, if fat has nine calories per gram and carbs and protein have four calories per gram, it, it's pretty simple. If you have a lot of fat in the diet, you're going to put yourself into a calorie surplus, eat quicker, yeah. easier, Yeah. right? And, and the calorie surplus is what drives fat gain. Not what you eat, it's the caloric surplus. Yeah. Just like the caloric deficit is what drives fat loss. So when we say don't worry about sugar because you're gonna be eating in a deficit, you can eat cupcakes all day long. You, we know you burn 2,700 calories just sitting there. Yeah. If you eat 1,500 calories worth of cupcakes, you're gonna lose fat, Yeah. right? Yeah. Because you have a calorie deficit of 700 every day if all you ate was cupcakes. Yeah, I mean, that's just such a when you think about it because you know if you don't know what you're burning, 
just by sitting there, it makes such a big difference. Right, and it's a huge difference. Yeah, it makes such a big difference. Now, and I know people get wrapped up in, well, I want to, I would just, I want to burn fat. I just, I want to be a fat burner. Mm -hmm. Eating fat makes you a fat burner, but you're burning the dietary fat. You're burning the fat. You want to burn your own fat. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we got to create that environment by feeding you a certain way. And, and that you, comes down to macro balance. And when you hear these messages about eat salmon, uh, we're not saying that avocados aren't health, heart healthy. We're not saying they're not nutritious. You, you only get the message that they're good for you. You never get the message that you should eat them in moderation because they're calorically dense. Yeah. Right? That's the number one thing you need to concern yourself with. Yeah. Is am, am I putting myself in a surplus? Yeah. I mean, we would much rather, and I know there's omega-3s in salmon, we would much rather, I personally would much rather have somebody eat chicken and then take an omega-3 supplement than try and get their omega-3s through salmon. Yeah. Right. So now, and you guys might get into this in terms of supplementation. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Because, like, right now I take a, you know, multivitamin, you know, I take omega-3, mm -hmm. I take, um, um, uh, what's my brain's going? Oh, osteo, osteoflex right. to, you know, for that. Um, BCAAs, and, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much the stretch of it, you know, after I work out. So, I mean, is, you have suggestions along those lines as well in terms of supplementation, those types of things? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I give everybody a certain regimen um, that we like, and you've got everything covered. The only thing missing is a probiotic. Okay. The reason why I like a probiotic is that it helps support the biome, the microbiome in your gut, mm -hmm. which can support fat burning. Okay. So, and this is gonna sound funny, but don't smack me, but it's okay. I'm not gonna smack you. Uh, usually probiotics, when you hear it, it's in association with a woman's commercial. Yeah, um, you're totally right. Yeah. Messaging. Yes. Mm -hmm. So no. when you say it, that's what, yeah. Probiotics are awesome. Okay. Awesome. They're so good for you. And our guts are just getting repopulated based on where our food is coming from and our environment. And there's just so many factors that play into it. But there's also a significant direct linkage to brain health, depression, anxiety, and your weight, your fat, the fat mass that you have. Yeah, too too much research behind it. That one is, yeah, that, that was where you see the commercials, and it's always about, you know, women's probably wearing this yogurt or something like that. With Which doesn't have enough probiotics. Doesn't have enough. Work. No, you need to take a pill. Right, pure marketing. If it makes you feel any better, I will recommend a male stroking this one. A male specific That's what I, 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 That's what I take sitting right there. Nice. Garden of life. I'll work it in for you. Okay. There. As long as it says men on it, then we're All right, that's fine. I don't care. But again, it's messaging, right? Okay. Don't get don't get sucked into that. Gotcha. No, I mean it, this is. But you're exactly right. So so much of this is going to be helpful not only for myself, but you know other people that you know listen to this and you know and, and as we direct them you know to to the program here, it just is dispelling so many things that you get burned into your brain in the messaging. And yeah, I mean, it, it makes a big difference. You need to shut that messaging off. Yeah. Shut off your receptors to the messaging. If you're curious about something, we are now your Google. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of have to take it with a grain of salt with what you hear. Don't let it register and make that emotional connection because when it comes to marketing this stuff, they're just prying on people's emotions. That's now, all that it is. And, and you know, one of the other things comes into is that, you know, you see folks switching over to, you know, a vegetarian lifestyle or, you know, being vegan, whatever you want to call it, in those cases, pescatarian, all the different things that are there, you know, the energy that you get from that, you're missing, you're missing other things. What are you all's thoughts on that? I mean, in terms of switching over from, you know, a meat to a vegetarian type lifestyle, because that's something that people have that quantity, they think everything's going to go away because they're now all of a sudden vegetarian. What are your thoughts on that? Not true. No, and our main concern, again, is, is preserving and increasing muscle mass. Mm -hmm. And that requires a, a relatively high protein intake, which for vegetarians and vegans, it becomes very difficult for them to do. And you will, we see vegetarians all the time who are eating, again, avocados, you know, very sort of high fat diets with not a lot of carbs, not a lot of protein, you know, and as a result, they might be light, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily lean. Yeah. 
No, I mean, right. I, that's yeah, a great point. Please I'm, say that again and say that loud because that makes a difference. I've seen people that have gone through that. You know, they think that it's just because they've gone that route that all of a sudden they're gonna, you know, shrink, but they're ma they're either maintaining or staying around the same weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe it could be the skinny fat thing as we talk about right. you know, in those, those cases. Right. That's yeah. exactly right. I mean if you're if you're eating if you switch over to a plant based diet, it's it, it's very difficult to be able to maintain the protein intake that you had before. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, especially if you're resistance training or doing intense exercise, your muscle mass is gonna fall. Yeah. Right? And it, a lot of times your muscle mass will fall faster than your fat mass falls, in which case you're getting lighter and fatter at the same time. Yeah, that's, and that's a great point. I mean, like I said, the light fat, this is that skinny fat thing right. is that people see all the time. You know, you may look some way, you know, when you're in clothing, mm -hmm. but you know, outside, it's just that it's, right. it's hard to be able to make that link. The other thing to that is that, you know, I've also seen that people don't necessarily have the energy that, you know, that either that they had before or you know they're trying to find ways to be able to get it whether it's supplementation or those types of things and it's like doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose it does it well people think that plant-based diets are automatically just going to make them healthier like you said you know well, i'm going to become a vegan and all that other stuff is just going to go away i'm going to be healthy because i'm vegan mm -hmm. vegans and vegan food products doesn't necessarily mean they're balanced <clears throat> All right, guys, there you have it. That was part three of the three-part series that uh, we've gone through. Now, hopefully you got a lot of things out of this last video and all the videos really, but this one specifically because so much of what our association with food, working out, those types of things, it's all about what's marketed to us, right? I'm in sales and marketing. I do this on a day-to-day -day basis. And there are things that, you know, we put out there. It's like we're influencing the way that you think. It's no different than food. Some of the myths that you heard in there are like, I'm sure they were like, bam, and it hit you like a rock, just like it did with me. Certain things we talk about BMI, when you start talking about intermittent fasting, vegetarianism, you know, there's so many things out there that give you a negative association with food and it shouldn't be that way. You ever heard the term bad food? Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. There are things that are healthier for you than others, but it shouldn't be labeled as bad and good. And this hopefully gave you a chance to be able to really kind of shake up your mindset and see where you want to go with this stuff. There is a plan out there for you. And one of the biggest things that I had to go through was to really get an understanding based on science how I could get to my goals. With the George Washington University, and I have to thank Dr. Todd Miller and Stephanie Moe from the nutrition side, that they sat down and they gave it to me right between the eyes and said, Ray, this is what needs to happen, okay? I highly suggest that you take the opportunity to be able to schedule up a consultation with them, go through the testing. I'm gonna link the group on so that you can get the discount that's there uh, and make sure that they know that uh, you know, you've come over there and you've talked with Excel Think. You know, it, it helps that they can get an understanding in terms of things like this that uh, you know, are kind of promotion because they're doing it all on their own and they do a great job over there. I highly endorse what they're doing and I'm gonna be following up and you'll see other videos that'll kind of give a uh, results orientation in terms of what's going on. Please consider subscribing to the channel. We always want this thing to be able to grow and it's coming on at a different, as a, at a nice little clip at this point. We want to be able to make sure that we get more videos out to you and it's just great to be able to get the support and feedback. To that effect, leave comments down below, positive, negative. All we're trying to say is that, you know, we want to be able to know how to do this better. And if you want to tell me how to do this better, I'm all for it. But if it's just about being negative, kick rocks. It is what it is. Thanks guys for coming out. I will talk to you soon.